I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm having my coffee here in Vienna, in Austria. We have reached the feast of Palm Sunday, which means it's the beginning of Great Week, or Holy Week, at the end of which Christ will be crucified on Friday, then rest in the grave on Saturday, and be resurrected early on Sunday, on the feast of Pascha, or Easter. So now, the focus we have had during Lent on our repentance, our journey, now this focus shifts to him as we accompany him in his final days leading up to the cross and resurrection. So now, whether we fasted properly or didn't fast at all, we all come together in compassionate love for him because he dies on the cross for all of us and certainly not just those of us who ate hummus and lentils for 40 days. We all come together now because from here on, it's all about him. That's why this Sunday we sing, Today the grace of the Holy Spirit has gathered us together. like the ones you see here, or in some churches, according to a very ancient tradition, we receive little crosses made of palm, because we are thus ritually participating in an event described in the Gospel when Christ entered Jerusalem, seated on a donkey before his passion. Then they brought the cult to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus comes to Jerusalem seated on a donkey, which symbolizes peace, and the branches and clothing placed before him symbolize triumph, as people would place in antiquity before a triumphant king entering a city. Because you see, at this point, before Christ's passion, the people had been so impressed by his remarkable miracles, like the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead, that they hoped and thought that he would seize political power and become their earthly king. But as most of you will know, he had other plans. So we carry branches on Palm Sunday knowing that this entrance into Jerusalem is leading him and us to a very different kind of triumph, not of political or military conquest, but of the resurrection of new life at the end of what we call Holy or Great Week. <laughs> week, we will be similarly placing ourselves in the midst of the events that are being remembered in the liturgical calendar, making these events present or re-presenting them before our eyes and pondering them in our hearts. On Holy Friday, for example, we read the 12 Gospels about the Passion, venerate the cross in the middle of the church, and in the Byzantine tradition, the Epitaphios, or Plashtenitsa in Russian, remembering and participating in the removal of Christ's body from the cross. On Holy Saturday, the Epitaphios remains in the middle of the church, as his incorruptible body remained in the tomb on that day. But on this day, on Holy Saturday, we already sense the underlying joy of the resurrection. In some Orthodox traditions, the church vestments are solemnly changed from black to white in the middle of the service on the morning of Holy Saturday. And in other Orthodox churches, bay leaves are spread 
throughout the church as a symbol of triumph. The joyous symbolism of Holy Saturday underlines that Christ's descent into hell on that day after his death on the cross is a victorious descent because he descends already as victor, as the God-man who could not be held by death or by hell. This is why an Orthodox icon of Pascha or Easter is actually an icon of Holy Saturday, of the descent into hell. rituals and hearing the unique prayers and hymns of this week, let us not underestimate the blessing and importance of our physical participation in them, both at home and in church, because the images, sounds, smells, and even tastes of the feast are an essential part of our human perception and understanding of it. And all these elements are a wonderful blessing that speaks to all our senses, our entire being. As Jesus said to his disciples, blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. The externals of a feast, all sorts of little customs and traditions attached to a feast are especially important to children who do not yet understand all the theology <clears throat> behind these things. So let's try and maintain <clears throat> the atmosphere of the feast at home as well, especially if there are children in the house. I remember <clears throat> things from my childhood, for example, on Holy Friday, how we would fast before the bringing out of the Epitaphios on Holy Friday. It was brought out at around 3 p.m. But then we would go home after that service and have a meal of potatoes and salad, which, strictly speaking, is forbidden on Holy Friday, but we were children, and this is the way it was done in our house. And on Holy Saturday, I remember how after the morning service, which was very exciting because the vestments had suddenly been changed to white, and this is a very clear symbol to a child's perception. And we would come home after this service and we would be sent to bed by my mother because we had to rest before the nighttime Easter vigil. So talking was strictly forbidden and we all had to sleep. There were four of us and we were in the same room and it was very hard to sleep. It was still daytime. And we could hear our mother fussing in the kitchen preparing the Easter food so the house smelled of baking ham in the oven and other things we hadn't had all of Lent. So everything was changing. You know, you could feel this in the air, the colors in church and the smells in the house. But we had to sleep and be quiet as Christ also still rested in the tomb. So all these things bring together a certain theological truth to the child's perception. Then we were woken up before midnight, and my mother dressed us in our new Easter dresses and new shoes, and we would go to church by midnight for the vigil. So let's participate as best we can in all the aspects of the feast, because the feast speaks to all our senses, our whole being in its images, its smells, its sounds, and even in its silence. That's it for today, ladies and gentlemen. See you all after Easter. <laughs>